appreciate you, church. I really do. Letting me preach here for 51 years, 52 years. I love you for that. Turn your Bible over to the book of Daniel. Book of Daniel, chapter 6, verse 19. Daniel, chapter 6, verse 19. <laughs> you know what they always say that that said uh, when the strike when the clock strikes twelve the dead in Christ rise first. Amen. <laughs> the dead in church rise first. Amen. Amen. Let's see. Uh, turn in the Bible to Daniel chapter six verse nineteen. I'll try to preach a little faster than I usually do since it's time's about gone. Uh, verse nineteen says. Let me turn this thing on here, please. On preach day on uh, when lions got the lockjaw. <laughs> the Bible said, then the king, they're talking about Darius, then the king arose very early in the morning and went in haste unto the den of lions. And when he came to the den, he cried with a lamentable, that's the only time that word's found in the whole Bible, lamentable, voice unto Daniel. And the king spake and said to Daniel, O Daniel, servant of the living God, is thy God whom thou servest continually able to deliver thee from the lions? Then said Daniel unto the king, O king, live forever. My God hath sent his angel and hath shut the lions' mouths that they have not hurt me. For as much as before him innocency was found in me, and also before thee, O king, have I done no hurt. Then was the king exceedingly glad for him, and commanded that they should take Daniel up out of the den. So Daniel was taken up out of the den, and no matter of hurt was found upon him, because he believed in his God. And the king commanded that they brought those men, now listen real close here, that they brought those men which had, which had accused Daniel and they cast them into the den of lions. Them, their children, their wives, and the lions had the mastery of them and break all their bones in pieces or ever they came to the bottom of the pit. Snap, crackle, and pop. That's my word right there. Then King Darius wrote unto all people, nations, and languages that dwell in all the earth, Peace be multiplied unto you. I make a decree <clears throat> that in every dominion of my kingdom <clears throat> men tremble and fear before the God of Daniel, for he is the living God and steadfast forever. And his kingdom, that which shall not be destroyed, and his dominion shall be even unto the end. He delivered, he delivereth and rescueth. The word rescueth is on in the Bible one time, and there it is. He delivereth and rescueth, and he worketh signs and wonders in heaven and in earth, who hath delivered Daniel from the power of the lions. So this Daniel prospered in the reign of Darius, and in the reign of Cyrus, the Persian. Let's pray. Amen. Come to you this morning, Lord Jesus. Thou knowest all things. You know the seriousness of the hour and how this message must needs be preached. Thank you, Lord, for everything that's went on before us already today. I pray for people's patience, their attention, and Lord God, they lay it to heart. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. I'm going to preach to you when God gives the lions lock, y'all. <laughs> Daniel was a child of God. <laughs> he was a Hebrew. He was a Jew. He'd been carried off into captivity into Persia. And there he was, a servant of the, of the king. And the king didn't know it, but Daniel had two kings. Amen. Darius was a king. And Jehovah was a king. Yep. Daniel had to choose which king to obey. 
He could not obey both of them at the same time. When it comes to a decision in your life, make it right. Make it with God. No matter what that crowd says, what they threaten you with, what they do to you, trust God. Because the Bible said, Daniel, he believed in his God. And God gave the lion's lockjaw. I want to preach a little bit about this. Daniel was a great man of God, interpreted dreams, and, and he, God trusted him with prophecy even to the end of time. We're living in the prophecy that Daniel prophesied. And it's coming to pass on down the road, and you'll see it unfolding very soon and quickly, more than ever before. God trusted Daniel with prophecy even to the very end. But Daniel had some people that was jealous of him. See, the king set over provinces and, and princes and, and presidents, and out of three presidents, Daniel became one of them. And the rest of the people that was in the government got jealous of Daniel. And they said, we can't destroy Daniel because there's nothing wrong with him. Everything's good about him. He does everything right. He's innocent. There's no guilt in him. Well, how, how can we get him? And somebody said, the only way we're ever going to be able to destroy him is through his God. He will not deny his God. He will not forsake his God. If we're going to get Daniel, we've got to get the king mad at Daniel over something about God. So they went to the king and said, Oh, Darius, you great, wonderful king. You're the smartest man. You're the greatest man, so forth, so on. And, that, and his ego got to puffing up, you know. And they said, Why don't you pass a law saying that nobody in your kingdom can worship anybody or pray to anybody but you? That sounds like a good idea. I'm so important. <laughs> so he wrote it out and signed it. They said, We got him now. We got him now. So they went and stood outside Daniel's window because they knew that Daniel prayed three times a day out that window every day. And when they heard Daniel praying, he got on his knees and prayed out in the window and prayed through that window toward Jerusalem. I'll get that in a minute. And we got him now. So they went to the king and said, you wrote this paper, king. You signed it. And the king's word cannot be altered. You got to throw Daniel in the lion's den. And the king didn't want to do that. He liked Daniel. Daniel interpreted dreams that nobody else could. And the king broke his own heart over Daniel. But he had to keep his word or he couldn't be king. Well, God's word is not altered. <laughs> Darius' word could not be altered. God's word could not be altered. There's a battle of the gods going on even today. And so he didn't want to do it to Daniel, but he had to to keep his word and keep the pledge. So he threw Daniel in the lion's den. Well, somehow or another, God sent an angel down there and gave them lions a bad case of lockjaw. He shut their mouths, and they couldn't eat Daniel. I kind of feel like Daniel got a premature visit to the millennial reign of Christ and where a wild beast were led through the street by little children. When the lion eats straw like an ox, when the wolf and the lamb <laughs> lay down together, yeah. when a kid plays over the snake hole and ain't hurt, uh, glory to God, I'm looking forward to that day. Yeah. When they beat their pl uh, spears in the pruning hooks and their, plow and their swords in the plow shears and they learn a war no more yeah. for a thousand years, yeah. glory to God. Daniel kind of got a preempt of that. But what I want to see is Daniel did not get ate up. The lions just couldn't get it. They just couldn't touch it. God was on Daniel, and Daniel was God's man, and God had a plan for Daniel. If you are in God's plan, he'll do supernatural things to keep you out of trouble. I found out a long time ago. Watch it very quickly. Lines were locked, y'all. And so Daniel was a follower of Jehovah God. He's a Jew. He's a foreigner. He wasn't even a Persian. And he got promoted president. Had the king's gold chain around his neck. That would make anybody jealous. But these men were out to get him. But instead of them getting him, the lions got them. Let me read one more time this verse here. And the king commanded, and they brought those men which had accused Daniel and cast them into the den of lions. Them, their children, their wives, 
And the lions had the master of them and break their bones in pieces before they had reached the bottom of the pit. They done jumped up and crushed them. So the lions were supposed to eat Daniel, but they ate his enemies. The lions will not eat you. They'll eat your enemies. Hallelujah. Bible said, and Peter said, the devil like a roaring lion, Going about, walking about, seeking who may devour. He ain't going to devour me. <laughs> but he'll sure chew the bones of the devil's crap. Yeah. Watch it, friend. There's a preacher. I've got a few things here. I'm going to preach to you about six or seven things real quick, and I'll be done. Daniel's great wisdom. He knew that the petition had already been signed. He knew it was already a law that you can't carry your Bible to school no more. He knew that there's already a law on the books by the king with a threat of being fed to the lions if you didn't do what the king told you to do. But Daniel didn't do what the king told you to do. He did what God told him to do. You see the battle? It's not a battle of flesh and the spirit. It's a battle of the devil and God. It's a battle of his command and God's command. God said, do this. Devil said, do that. Who are you going to obey? Come on, Come on. Daniel's wisdom. He went to his house, opened the windows toward Jerusalem, and he prayed three times a day, every single day, without interruption. And with 30 minute lines then, he just prayed for the lines then. <laughs> you see, it's not where you're at. But how you pray. We need to do more praying. Daniel's wise. He did some real praying. He met with his God. He refused to panic. People today get too excited. They just fall apart. They have one of them burnouts. Nervous breakdown. They have one of them problems where they have to go see a psychiatric trichist. They have all sorts of mental problems. Because they panic. Put your faith in the God of Daniel and let her in. If he can't control it, you certainly can't. Daniel's wisdom. He didn't protest to the king. He didn't look for sympathy from his friends. He just obeyed the Lord. Such a simple way to live, ain't it? <laughs> just obey the Lord. Let, let the politicians for us and curse and fight and raise the devil. Just trust the Lord. God in heaven, just trust the Lord. Just walk in the good grace of God and let him handle the problems. He said, cast all your cares upon me, for I care for thee. Amen. You can't handle it. Let him do it. Quit fretting about it and let God have it. He knew his life was in danger. It was always wise to get in touch with God first. Not your friends. Not your psychiatric problem. Not the president, but the king of kings, the Lord Jesus. Yep. Yep. He'll tell you exactly what to do. Yes. Amen. Small problems, big problems, life-threatening problems like Daniel had, just go ahead and trust God with them. He can handle them. Daniel is a possession of two kings, like I said a minute ago, to whom you're going to obey. Whom you're going to obey. If the devil says something and God says something opposite, then you've got a battle. Who? Are you going to give in to? Yep. The spirit of the flesh, God of heaven, or the God of this world, the devil, what are you going to give in to? You've got to obey somebody. Amen. You've got to go one way or the other. Everybody in this room is going to be in heaven one day after a while or hell. Yep. Yep. And now's the time you make your choice. Come on. Now's the time you've changed the direction. Now's the time you repent and head toward heaven. Yep. Now's the time the first day of the rest of your life cool. and the last day of the old life. I'm glad I came to a day one day when I got born again. The old man died. Thank God. And you man was raised up in Christ Jesus. But the fact is this, Daniel was smart. He decided to follow God no matter what. The Bible said the word of the king cannot be altered. And the Bible said the word of God cannot be altered. Whose words are going to go by? Number two, his great courage. Now in the face of lions... I don't know what would happen to me if I had to face a lion. Probably get Ed up. 
unless God come on the scene. But the fact is, Daniel was not afraid of the lions because he had God. When you've got God, you don't have to fear nothing. The Bible said, the love of God casteth out fear. Fear hath torment. And they that are, have fear not, are not made perfect in love. If you love God, he'll take care of your fear. Just put your faith in him. Daniel's great courage. The Christian life, there ain't no place for sissies. I found that a long time ago. Wimps and backsliders and backbiters, they don't have the victory. They're up and down, up and down, in and out, all about. But just put it in Jesus' hands. He'll take it. He didn't pray in his closet. You know, the Bible says, Jesus said to pray in your closet. But you don't pray in your closet when it's the matter of you to pray public. Yeah. One man said, when he's eating dinner, somebody said, why ain't you praying over your food? He said, oh, the Bible said pray in your closet. Do you eat in your closet? <laughs> One guy said, not let your left hand know what your right hand's doing. That's because they ain't doing nothing neither hand. <laughs> if God told Daniel to pray, out his window, he prayed out his window. Yeah. Said, pray to the lion, didn't pray. This thing wasn't done in the corner. Hey. Christ wasn't crucified behind a bush. He's out there where everybody can see him. Yeah. It's time for God's people yeah. to be like Daniel and stand up and stand out. Yeah. Speak up and speak out. Hey. For the glory and honor of God. <laughs> Though Daniel couldn't see Jerusalem, he couldn't see the temple, yeah. he couldn't see the mercy seat. He couldn't see the cherub covering it. He couldn't see it. But he knew which way direction he was in. Amen. <laughs> he opened up his windows towards Jerusalem and prayed toward home. Old Bob Shuffer used to sing a song that went something like this. Lock me up in a prison and throw away the key. But as long as I have Jesus, my soul shall still go free. I'm telling you, Daniel, he couldn't see Jerusalem. He couldn't see the temple. He couldn't see the Shekinah glory. But he knew which direction to pray in <laughs> because there's a drawing power. There's a drawing power. I'm glad, thank God, for the drawing power. Ain't you, thank God, glad for the drawing power? Something pulling in that direction, pulling that direction. Which direction are you praying? Pulling, pray the way it's pulling. Pray the way the Spirit's drawing. And old Daniel fashioned his eyes toward Jerusalem and prayed toward the temple. He had seen it. He had been there. He knew what it was like there. But he wasn't there, but he knew what direction to pray in. I haven't seen heaven, but I'm on my way. Amen. And I'm praying and working and striving in that direction. His great courage. Daniel already proved his courage way back when we refused the king's wine yeah. and the meat sacrificed to idols. Yes, he said, give me water and vegetables. That's all I want is water and vegetables. I'll get by on that. I don't need your meat. don't need your wine. Amen. You don't have to live high on the hog, so to say, to be happy. Amen. The Bible said be content with food and raiment yes, yeah. and be content with your wages. Yeah, but we're today, my friend, we're not like Daniel. We can't be satisfied with meager get-by. Uh, right. We're going to feast at the king's table. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. But the fact is Daniel done showed his courage by refusing the wine or the meat. Mm -hmm. Number three, his great faith. He was in Babylon praying toward home. That's where we're at today, friend. And so there's a man named Jonah one day. He got swarmed by a whale because he wouldn't obey God. God just made fish bait out of him and fed him to the whale. And the whale swallowed him. Went down to the bottom of the mountains. To the bottom of the mountains. As far down as you could go. And then he let old Jonah take a peek. And Jonah saw the bars of hell. And he had weeds, seaweeds around his neck. And by the time John said, I want to go back to Jerusalem. Come on. Yeah. So he started praying toward Jerusalem from the whale's belly. Now how in the name of heaven do you know which way Jerusalem is in your whale's belly? 
Yeah. There's something drawing you in that direction. Yeah. When I get down and out, thank God it's up drawing me in the right direction. Yeah. <coughs> Lions just can't eat that kind of faith. It's great faith. The Shekinah glory wasn't on the temple. The Shekinah glory wasn't on the altar. The Shekinah glory wasn't on the mercy seat. The Shekinah glory wasn't on the cherubims. They was burnt to the ground. All that stuff was. But God was still real. The church you're sitting in one day will be a heap of ashes. It may last till Jesus comes. But when he comes, it's going to be a heap of ashes. The thing you own is quickly passing away. But the glory of it fades not away. I'm saying, thank God. The glory is what we're after. Shouting happy. Well, that next point number four. I'm hurrying. I really am. The great humility. Daniel was a humble man. He prayed three times a day on his knees. On his knees. One time they was having a revival at the church, and uh, this old boy, he was under conviction, he went to the altar and got down on one knee, and he was praying. This old boy sat back and said, close eyes, he ain't going to get it today. He ain't going to get it today. Well, he went back the next night. The old boy said, he ain't going to get it today. He ain't going to get it today. About the fifth night, he went up there and fell down on both knees, squalling his eyes out. The old boy said, he's going to get it today. He's going to get it today. <laughs> You're going to have to get humble, friend. Yeah, yeah. Amen. Oh. Humility. Amen. You know, humility ain't something you think you got. Humility is something other people think you got. Come on. <laughs> One time, this man was the humblest man in the church. He was so humble, always so nice and kind and gentle and praying. He was just the sweetest man there was. So they gave him a badge, had a badge made, the humblest man ever. And they gave it to him. And he was so thrilled that they honored him with that badge. And he put it on, they took it away from him. You see, when you start bragging about how humble you are, you ain't humble no more. Yeah. Humility is something other people think you are, not what you think. It's time for God's people to get like old Daniel and humble herself before the Almighty Jehovah God. Yeah. Open up your windows and pour your heart out toward God and let God do something in your life. He'll stop the mouths of the lion. He'll give them locked jaw and they can't open their mouths and they can't eat you and they can't do no harm to nobody as long as their mouth shut up. Well, he could have been holding a seminar on how to please God or how to be a success. When my mind goes to a praying man, it goes to old Percy Ray. I am so thrilled. I've knelt in his presence many a time as he brought heaven down in that room and in this church and other places. A praying man of God. Humble, but yet when he prayed, lines shut up. God needs men and women who will pray and let God do the work. Amen. Old preacher down in North Carolina one time, he said, I gotta pray twice as much, get half as much done. <laughs> That'll sink in a minute. <laughs> well, he put both knees on the floor. That old man has to break down. You know, when you pray, you ain't through till you get done. And you ain't done till you get through. <laughs> Sometimes we don't pray long enough. Hard enough, yeah. loud enough, uh -huh. mad enough. Launch out against the devil next time you pray. Yes, Just fly into him like chicken on a June bug. I mean, let him have a hen pecking. God yeah. will honor you when you go against the king when the king's bad. By the way, the lions not only had their mouth shut, but so did King Darius. <laughs> Glory to God. <laughs> Amen. Watch it here. Yeah, get on down to the next. I'm almost done. He had great persistence. Now, persistence is something we are lacking today. Yeah. You know, they keep on keeping on, keep on keeping on, keep on keeping on. Never faltering, never hindering, never quitting. Just keep on keeping on. Amen. He just kept on. Kept on. Watch this. He went to that window, opened it three times a day after he knew that the law was going to get him. 
after he knew that the law was against him. He prayed that three times. He prayed toward Jerusalem. Daniel chapter 10, verse 1 through 13. Another time Daniel prayed. There's an enemy. And Daniel was praying, praying, praying for deliverance from this enemy. For 21 days, Daniel didn't eat nothing. He prayed three times a day, but he didn't eat nothing. And God sent Michael, the archangel, went throw Satan out of heaven, that, that same angel. God sent that big boy down there to help Daniel. <laughs> he didn't send the pastor of the local Baptist church. He didn't send some backslid deacon or backslid Sunday school teacher. He sent Michael. Yep. This is job for the big boy. Yep. Yeah. This is job that only Michael can handle. And Michael came down and said, Daniel, thou son of God, thou man of God, Daniel, thou man of God, I've come to help you. He said, but the prince of Persia hindered me 21 days. Now, if the devil can hinder a man or an angel... For 21 days, it's going to take something like that to stop blind smiles. You've got an enemy that'll swallow you up and chew you up and spit you out. But the hand of God is there to help you. Have you ever got in such trouble that only a miracle can deliver you? Oh, son, it's wonderful when you step on the other side and say, I'm glad that's over. Like the Calvinist says this Calvinist one time, he believed in predestination election. Everything happened to you was already predestined. You couldn't stop it. You couldn't help it. It's going to happen anyway. Well, he fell down a set of stairs one day. God got up and said, I'm glad that's over. <laughs> you don't have to fall down the stairs. There's no predestination election to it. Those that are saved are predestinated and elected. Yeah. Amen. <laughs> I'm glad I'm predestinated and elected. Yeah. Hey. I wasn't that way when I was born. I, go, I was born my back toward God, heading toward hell. Right. The fact is, friend, back to this. Great persistence. Over in the book of Luke, chapter 18, Jesus yeah. tells a story about a woman. She went to the judge. She pleaded her case. He shoved her off. I ain't got time to fool you. She went back again. She said, he said, no, I ain't got time to fool you. I don't regard God, and I don't regard you, and I don't regard nobody. I'm a judge. I don't, I don't have time for you. She went back again. Finally, he said this. He said, to keep her from bothering me, I'm going to give her what she wants. And then Jesus said, don't your heavenly Father who loves you want to do good things for you? He said, keep on asking. I didn't get it yesterday. Ask again today. If I don't get to ask again tomorrow. Jesus Christ himself prayed the same prayer three times in one night. But he got his answers. So keep on being persistent. Have you ever had a child say, I want a lollipop, I want a candy bar. I they keep on, well, okay, I'll buy you one. <laughs> God wants to give you good gifts. But he loves to hear you ask and you shall receive. You see what kind of person God answers prayer for? A man like Daniel, who keeps on and keeps on and keeps on and doesn't quit. I'm like, I love old Daniel. He can, he can keep lying his mouth from opening up. Daniel. Well, our Heavenly Father will avenge his elect speedily, about speedily. You be persistent. He's on his way. He's on his way. Like that song they sang, the answer's on its way. You're going to go. Daniel could see no reason why God should not answer his prayer. Now, he don't, don't stop here just a minute. I know it's only, well, whatever. But can you think of one good reason why God should not answer your prayer? That's deep theology. God don't ever hear me. Why? God don't answer my prayer. Why? There's something wrong somewhere that God's prayer ain't coming through to you. Yes, sir. Yes. The Bible said you have not because you ask not. Yes. You have not because you ask amiss. Because yes. who's on the list? The Bible said if, if I regard iniquity in my heart, God will not hear me when I pray. Come on. And God said your sins have come up before me and separated me from thee. 
When you pray, I will not hear. When you lift up your hands, I will not look at it. Because your sins have separated me from thee. Is there anything in your life that keeps your prayer from getting through? That's the thing you need to repent of today. Oh, quiet now. But Daniel could not think of any reason why God shouldn't answer his prayer. The Bible said he was innocent. Innocence he found in. He regarded God. He went against the king's orders in order to obey his father, his heavenly father. There was not one reason in Daniel's life why God should not hear his prayer. But he kept on hammering, kept on hammering, kept on hammering, and God heard his prayer. How do you stop the mouths of lions? You do it through prayer. And believing in your God. Very quickly. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. Ask you shall receive, seek you shall find, knock shall be opened. If you'll get your life right with God, he said, ask anything in my name. Faith believe in nothing doubt, and you shall receive it. Prayer is something we don't do like we used to do. Prayer is something we need to get back to. We need to get back on the hillside or some of the big old trees where nobody around you just fall out to God everything you've got. Or crawl in your closet and silently whisper it. But you've got to pray. You've got to get back to pray. Daniel prayed. He prayed 21 days and had to have help from heaven to get his answer. But he got it. Well, is there any earthly reason why God shouldn't hear your prayer this morning? Keep on praying. Keep on praying. Number six, I ain't got but seven of them, his great gratitude. Verse 10, Daniel thanked God before the problem. He thanked God during the deliverance from the problem. He thanked God for the deliverance of the problem. Get ahead of it. Don't wait till hell falls on you and say, Lord, deliver me. Stay away from hell. Pray to stay away from the problem. Like a guy, he's uh, courting this girl, courting this girl, courting this girl, courting this girl. Why is he engaged to some other girl? You, you don't do that. Well, like the man who's married to a woman, he checks out the chicken moms everywhere he goes. You don't do that. You stay ahead of the problem. You stay ahead of it. Thank God I've been delivered from that. And when they come around messing around, you ain't got no problem there. But if you wait till you get in the middle of that thing, then try to straighten it out. Your fiance's gone, and your wife's gone, and the girlfriend's gone. You ain't got nothing. <laughs> stay ahead of it. And when you do get caught up in something, right then don't wait till psychiatrists come along. Get on your face before God and get the answer. Then when it's over, you say, thank God I went the way I went and didn't go the way I was headed. I can honestly tell you that I'm glad I'm going the way I'm going to where I was headed years ago. Prayer. Prayer keeps you on the straight and narrow. Prayer keeps you walking down the middle of the road. Oh, they pull, they pull. But the prayer of prayer, power of prayer keeps you on the straight and narrow. Daniel, he prayed. He's a praying man. Three times a day, every day, sink or swim sunshine or night, then blind, then or no, he kept on praying three times a day. So he gave the lion's lock to y'all. Now, last of all, his great victory. The victory is simply this. God destroyed all of Daniel's enemies. Every one of them. Some people worry about the little things. Others worry about the big things. But he destroyed all his enemies. Is there anything in this world that's bothering you God can't handle? Not one thing in this whole wide world has bothered you that God can't handle. The Bible said Daniel believed in his God. He prayed God stopped the mouths of the lions, stopped the mouths of the king, and killed his enemies. His enemies. They're the ones the lions ate. They aimed it for Daniel. They trained him lines to chew up Daniel. They raised him lines for the purpose of chewing up Daniel. They starved him lines so they were getting hungry when Daniel got there. They meant for them lines to eat Daniel, but the lines ate Bill. 
The world is out to destroy you, but who gets destroyed? The world. The lions cannot eat the child of God. The lions cannot eat. Oh, one more verse of scripture I'll say. I think I wrote it down here. Hebrews 11, 33. <laughs> Talking about the road called the faithful. The Bible said they stopped the mouths of the lions. God can destroy the king of the beasts, the ruler of the jungle, the big, bad, mighty lion. He can handle him, but you can't. But you can stop his mouth by praying, believing, trusting, and letting God deliver you right in the face of the devil. I'll show you one more thing for a bit here. I can find it again real quickly. I, I forget. I'm going to quit just a minute. I promise you. Don't go to sleep on me yet. I promise you. I, 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 Daniel, one, more, one more page or two here. Yeah, one more page. It says here, and the king commanded, and they brought those men, the ones that wanted to throw him in the pit, which had accused Daniel and cast them into the den of lions. Them, their children, and their wives, and the lions had the mastery of them, and break all their bones before they hit the bottom of the pit. Here's what don't you see. There's only one thing worse. Daddy, hey, Daddy. There's only one thing worse than you going to hell. And that's taking your kids with you. Yeah. Yeah. Only one thing worse, Mama, than you going to hell. And that's taking your kids with you. Why don't you get right with God for no other reason than keep your kids out of hell? Yeah. Plus, you get to go to heaven. Yeah. Ain't they something to live for? Amen. Ain't they anything in your life worth giving up sin for and trusting Christ? Ain't there anything you value more than your own selfish pride? Amen. Let's pray. God, we come to you in the name of Jesus.